Starting a daycare centre in the Philippines, is that a good idea? The, the answer is there's a demand for it. The rates for a lot of the daycare centres is quite expensive. Now, I'd have to take a strong look at it as a viable business, but I know somebody who runs a special school, I know somebody who runs a Christian school, and they're both foreigners. And this is where there is a viability there, because they're not new schools as such, they've been there for a long period of time. But there is profit in them, but also there's a sense of being able to help the community. I think the biggest stumbling block people will face is getting the thing started. Legislation and paperwork are always a nightmare. It doesn't matter what country you're in. In the Philippines, it would probably help to befriend a, another school in another town. Uh, for example, we are pretty, pretty. Well, I wouldn't say close. We know well the people that run Zoe School in Talise. So us having a school in Minglanilia would have very little impact on them whatsoever, but they may be interested in help, helping develop our, our school alongside theirs. And this is what I'm saying. If you've got somebody that's just outside of your area, so you've got to go and visit them, and you're unlikely to be pulling students away from them, uh, you may find that it's worth the investment to go and speak to the principal and see what headaches there are and what issues you're likely to face because it's going to be paperwork which will be your biggest burden. Getting students, not a problem. Making sure they pay you on time, <laughs> I'll leave that to you. Um, but generally people don't let them run up debts um, from the ones I've seen and experienced. Um, you might get away with it for a month but generally they're expecting to be paid on time every month. Um, if you don't, they're pestering you. It's as simple as that. Um, I know kids that have had to be removed from uh, daycare and also uh, primary school. Um, what do you call that? Elementary in the US? Um, but they be, they've had to be removed because their parents couldn't afford the schooling anymore. So there is that side to it where you've got to sit and weigh it up. But a friend of mine has a good way of helping with that because he has some quite wealthy students in his school. It's, um, it's a specialist school, but the, the fact is the specialist kids from wealthy families are funding the school while a lot of the free placements are for those from poor families, um, which I think is a fairer system. Um, I know some people might say, yeah, but I earn my own money. But at the same time, you're helping the community. And that's, for me, that is why I do most of the stuff I do in the Philippines. It's more to do with the people there and the people around me. Um, because I see Minglanilia as my hometown. <laughs> um, because that's, that's where everything is. That's where my kids were brought up. This is... Um, where my wife's from. This is where I've spent nearly a decade. So for me, it would be perfect to open a school there because it would actually help develop the community and be a community project. So, yeah, I'd say it's a good idea, but I would say if you're looking to do it, don't expect it to be overnight. Don't expect to just open it and it's just going to go great. You're going to have the fire officer around, the mayor's permits, all this paperwork to get through. And that's why it's worth speaking to other people first, but also seeing what relatives and members of your wife's family that know people in the local government because a lot of the stuff in the Philippines is so much easier when you know people. Thanks for watching.